Hello there, I'm Rita Verde, your Arts Consortium Board President, and welcome to the May 2022 membership meeting. We will get started by uh, asking you to become a member of the Arts Consortium if you're not already. We have a lot of wonderful things happening uh, in the Arts Consortium, and a little bit later on in the meeting, you're going to uh, see um, Pelio Mejia uh, give you an executive director's report of all the wonderful things that are happening with the Arts Consortium. This month's presenter is uh, Rosa Rodriguez and also the executive director of CASA, Alberto Ramos. Uh, CASA's mission is, it speaks up for the innocent children who are victims of abuse and neglect, advocating for their safety and well-being by training volunteers to represent their best interests and be their voice in court. Let me give you a little bit of background on both of our presenters. First of all, Alberto Ramos is the executive director at CASA of Tulare County. He has 13 years of experience in nonprofit work with children and families, 10 years with CASA. Alberto was born in Visalia, although raised in Farmersville, and he has lived in the area for most of his life. He received post-secondary education at CSU Long Beach and Fresno Pacific University. Alberto's motto is, work hard, but don't forget to play. Rosa Rodriguez attended California State University, Sacramento, where she received her bachelor's in ethnic studies. As a coordinator, Rosa guides advocates to ensure the children to whom advocates are appointed receive advocacy and permanency. Additionally, Rosa is responsible for CASA's relationships with community partners, such as the Arts Consortium, who provide enrichment activities for the children that CASA serves. So two wonderful presenters, and I ask that you stay tuned for those presentations. Don't forget that our next membership meeting will be on Tuesday, June the 14th, 2022. We'll see you on the flip side. Thanks. Welcome to the Arts Consortium May membership meeting. I'm Alberto Ramos, and I'm the executive director at CASA. CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates, and I've been involved with the organization for 10 years. I've been a volunteer and uh, staff for about the same amount of time. Hi everyone, I am Rosa Rodriguez with Casa of Tulare County. I am an advocate coordinator with Casa of Tulare County. I've been with Casa since 2017. I started off as a volunteer and shortly after, about a year after, in 2018, I became a staff. Um, and as a staff, as an advocate coordinator, I am supervising about 20 to 25 volunteers and the organization started out of a need for more information. And it was a judge in uh, Washington, Seattle, Washington, that had been assigned to juvenile dependency cases. He realizes he doesn't have enough information about the kids to make proper decisions. And so uh, his idea was to recruit community members, trusted people that uh, he would uh, screen, background check, and train in uh, legal proceedings. And so that's how the CASA program started soon after that. Uh, jurisdictions from all over the country were flocking to him to, to, to try and um, learn about the program and, and copy it in their jurisdictions. And so from that, the National CASA organization was born. Yeah. I think uh, my, my Voice Media has been a, a, a beautiful um, partnership. Uh, because we get to bring in our, our CASA kids and their volunteers. And they all gather together at our office, um, led by an instructor from the Arts Consortium. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful thing in many ways that they get to express themselves through art and get to learn about art, uh, where many haven't had this experience. You know, a lot of these kids um, that we get in, in, in assigned to us that get come into this foster care world, the dependency world, have been missing school. They've been... Um, uh, not engaging in school, um, sometimes up to two years have been out of school. So these kids are um, are lacking in a lot of enrichment activities. So this is, gives us the ability to connect these kids on site because oftentimes these kids feel isolated, like they don't they don't want to tell anybody they're in foster care. They feel you know ashamed of it. So I think getting them together so they could see each other to build some relationships. I think it's a beautiful thing for them. Um, so we're very grateful for this opportunity and this partnership. And I'd like to add that 
Um, like Alberto said, the volunteers are connecting, so they're getting to know each other. The children are connecting, they're getting to know each other. And the volunteers and the children are getting to interact with CASA and the CASA staff on a more personal level. So that just strengthens everybody's relationships. And, and the children have, we've had children that, you know, connected and they've become friends. And then the volunteers start to exchange contacts and then they go on outings on their own aside from the um, art nights that we have at CASA. So it's, re it's really neat. It's really neat because these kids really do connect and they get to meet other kids their age or about their age with which they know are in foster care and have struggles and experiences that they can relate. Um, we've had children in the art sessions that have felt very comfortable to where they've wrapped and, you know, everybody in, yeah, we've had it twice now. Um, and everybody just applauds them and encourages them to continue. The more healthy relationships a child has, mm -hmm. the more likely that child will recover from trauma and thrive, you know, because a lot of these kids are acting out, but in a, in a, in another way because of their experiences. So, um, their symptoms, these negative behaviors or symptoms or the acting out are symptoms of their experiences. Uh, if anybody wants to be a volunteer, they can reach out to us, you know, via Facebook, uh, follow us on Facebook, uh, send us a message, um, go to our website or call our office. What they should experience is once they connect with the outreach coordinator team is after the screening process, um, the outreach coordinator will determine if the candidate is appropriate and needs to move forward. And then there's an application process. There is a background check and there's references that we required. Um, and then everything, once everything checks out and they pass the training, then they get sworn in. If, if we have a child in the wait list, meaning they don't have a volunteer assigned, the court will ask that CASA be vested with educational rights. Or if there is a volunteer assigned, then we would ask the CASA assign if they are willing to hold educational rights. Which is an interesting thing, right? These volunteers are actually, when they get sworn in, they become officers of the court. Yeah, well, well. So I have an idea to, um, or at some point, a project to capture this history in some sort of visual, whether it's a timeline or a timeline with the faces of these individuals, these, these leaders who helped the organization get started here in Tulare County. I'd like to tell that story in some sort of uh, visual thing and maybe a mural on, in our office in Visalia. So um, if that speaks to anybody out there, come and talk to me. I'd, I, you know, I'd love to get that in motion. Um, I'd like to honor the history of the organization and the individuals who were key people to get it, get it going and get it to be what it is today. And I would just add, you know, follow us on Facebook uh, or social media, any social media, and go to our website. You know, if you see an activity, especially on social media, share it. Um, if you'd like to become a volunteer, reach out to us. Or if you know someone that would be a great volunteer, you know, encourage them or connect them to us. And if you can't think of other ways, if you'd like to donate, you know, please call our offices. We're here. We're always willing to connect with you and and. We'll be good stewards of your support, regardless of whatever type of support it is. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you, and don't forget to join uh, next month's membership meeting on June 14th. Awesome. Thank you both very much. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Arts Consortium's membership meeting for... May. Um, we're really happy that you could be here and we're really excited about everything that's going on with the Arts Consortium. Um, starting off with First Friday. If you were out and about this last First Friday, thank you very much. We got reports that every one of our venues had a really, really good turnout uh, for the entire night and so uh, thank you very much for participating to all of our venues. Thank you for coming out and seeing all of the art and we hope you had a great time. Uh, we want to thank all the facilitators of the My Voice Media Center and the um, Arts Consortium staff for providing art to the Brandon Mitchell Gallery so that they can have a show from May through June. And uh, we had our May reception with a couple people there. 
And in June, we're going to have a potluck celebration so you can join us and have some food while you're there. We want to thank the executive director of CASA, Alberto Ramos, and the volunteer coordinator, uh, Rosa Rodriguez, for their presentation to us. Uh, we hope that uh, it was uh, educating as far as sort of the resources that we have for youth in our area and the partnerships that uh, Arts Consortium and My Voice Media Center has been exploring lately. I do want to let you know that uh, we are working internally on a lot of policy and a lot of uh, updating sort of infrastructure that the Arts Consortium needs to continue growing. And so um, you might notice that we're a little bit slower and uh, maybe maybe you won't hear so much from us, but it's it's uh, we're, we're busy and we're doing things to to keep our uh, keep our arts community going. As far as the My Voice Media Center, our second annual installation is up. This year is the Tranquil Lenii Landmark. Uh, Lenii is a type of magnolia tree. And uh, the difference between this year and last year's installation is that this year the committee actually drew uh, an image exactly what they wanted and the result is pretty darn close. So we're super proud of them. They worked really hard. Uh, they gave it everything they had and, and, and they got a really, really beautiful, beautiful installation. Uh, they even included video and, uh, and so, so please, if you have any, if you have any time and you uh, want to come check it out, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Tuesday through Friday at 808 North Court Street. As far as the self-help project, the lofts at Fort Visalia, they, if you haven't heard, they are accepting phone calls at 559-651-1000. Let them know that you're interested in living there once the lofts are completed. This is the last month for you to turn in any submissions that you have to be considered for the Watermark Art Contest. Uh, once again, this is a $500 prize and uh, you don't have to submit your actual work. All we need is a picture of it. And if you think, well, maybe my camera is not that great, that's okay. If your work is chosen, we will uh, come to you or, or set up a schedule and take a good picture of your work. Email those submissions to hello at artsconsortium.org with the title um, Watermark Art Contest and uh, we'll, we'll let you know who won during our next membership meeting. So that's exciting. So just in case you are representing an organization and this pertains to you, there are some new California requirements for organizations who have more than five employees and it has to do with retirement uh, plans. So if, uh, if you are uh, with an organization that has more than five uh, employees uh, and are looking for something, we uh, the Arts Consortium is currently going to be considering some of these options so uh, we can we can share research and uh, share options with you if you want but uh, it is coming up and uh, if you're if you're not affected well then then uh, you can disregard this message. If you notice that there are a couple of new pianos in the downtown Visalia area then you have Andrew Kennefick at the Grace Note Music Studio to thank for that and uh, he's looking to do a few more and, uh, and we, might, we might partner with him. So keep an eye out for uh, more free access pianos in the downtown Lysalia area. I wanna take a short moment and share my appreciation, our appreciation for you and everybody else who has helped the Arts Consortium along to where we are now. Uh, we, have a, we have a really amazing team um, who is you know, helping us refine things, but uh, we wouldn't be here without without a lot of hard work uh, beforehand, and uh, and we wouldn't be able to continue without the strong support uh, that we have in our community and the dedicated staff and board members here at the Arts Consortium. So I wanted to take a moment and acknowledge everybody's contribution to the Arts Consortium, uh, including yours. So. Uh, thank you all very much, and we look forward to seeing you in person. Please give us your feedback if you'd like to meet in person. Comment down below. Uh, we'll we'll keep doing these um, on video until until we really get an idea that that people want to be back in person. Uh, so let us know, and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, in the future. Have a great day. Most of my stuff.